Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how I make painting watercolor trees so easy. It's the first thing that's gonna make approaching any subject, whether it's trees, flowers, portraits, animals, no matter what, is to analyze the shape and structure of that subject. So obviously there's gonna be a bunch of different types and shapes of trees. We have aspen trees and oak trees and evergreen trees and so many other ones that I'm not like a tree connoisseur, um, but I have a bunch of videos on the topic. So you wanna analyze the shape of the tree first. Is it a spear shape or a tall cylinder shape like those cypress trees? Or is it more of a ball round shape, like a, like a maple tree? I think, again, I'm not a tree connoisseur, but you wanna analyze the basic shape. And if that shape is, let's say a ball shape, where it's maybe a ball on top with two balls on the bottom or three, how would you shade a ball? How would you shade a circle? So literally go back to high school art class and picture yourself drawing with a pencil the outline of a circle, analyzing where the light source is, the core shadow, all of that stuff. How would you shade to add dimension? You would gradually start from your shadow, maybe that's on the left side, and get lighter with pressure as you come up to your core, your light source, your highlight, your main highlight on the circle. So the same idea is going to apply to your trees. So once you analyze the basic shape of your tree, you're then going to use, your base layer is going to be wet and wet and it's gonna show, basically be your shading layer. So you, were, you will start with, let's just pick apart the circle example, the ball example. You're gonna start with your darker or your more shadow tone greens or oranges, depending if it's fall or not. And you're gonna start in away from the light source and add water to gradually bring that color up to a lighter highlight to show that spherical shape. Then once that layer dries, your next simple step to painting watercolor trees is to add stippling, stipling, pointillism details to the tree on top with a slightly thicker, more opaque color once that base layer is dry. So I like to kind of take my brush and it's a little damp and splay it open so that the hair of my round brush goes like floof. And I take my darker, thicker color and I just kind of sprinkle that on there. That natural texture of the brush when it's splayed open like this, or you can use a fan brush or something like that that's a little bit more fluffy. And just give it that nice dappled tree look, just, just simply from using the texture of the brush. Another fun trick I like to use that I have up my sleeve for painting watercolor trees is dry brush technique. So get a really thick consistency of paint with a very little bits of water and scribble it around, kind of like doing those circular motions that you do when you're brushing your teeth. And you'll see the natural texture of the brush plus the texture of the paper kind of working in opposition together to create this dry texture. That's gonna give it this like, texture to it that makes it look like little tiny leaves all over the place. I love using dry texture, scribbling that around, especially the darker shadow area. So if I'm taking that ball shape, I'm going around the curve, whether the light source is over here or over here, and I'm adding those scribble motions with my dry brush and a lot of pigment so that it creates that texture, that really fun texture. And then lightening that amount of that texture as I work my way up those spheres. One of my final tricks that I have up my sleeve for painting watercolor trees and making it look so easy is utilizing fine liners or a size two brush to bring up really tiny branches throughout the little pokes in your leaves. Like you might have little tiny gaps, like a fingernail gap of white space with the paper showing through. And that's a fun little area to just do these little spider web looking branches with really little pressure on the tip of your size two brush or a fine liner brush just to make it look that much more realistic, just with a super simple step of adding that in. You don't need to do much. It's just a little couple little lines looking like branches, um, poking through the gaps of white space between your leaves to make it look more like a tree and it's fun. So really you don't need to make your watercolor trees that complicated. I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on painting watercolor trees on this YouTube channel for free. We'll link to it in this video, check it out. 
And then also, if you want to explore more of my videos and more in-depth knowledge on the medium of watercolor, then make sure you download for free my Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor ebook. It's a 40-page, in-depth, super, super dope uh, ebook on all things watercolor, like supplies and techniques and step-by-step -step tutorials and all of that and resources. So make sure you check that out. It's completely free. And it also has QR codes within, within the pages to a lot of my videos that are going to help explore whatever I'm talking about in that uh, ebook. And it's also going to condense all of my best tutorials in one spot. So if you want things super organized and in one spot, make sure you download it. We'll link to that page where you can sign up and receive the ebook for free straight to your email um, in this video. So make sure you check that out. And also I have an art community where every single month I'm uploading two monthly exclusive tutorials along with teaching a live art class every single month and doing art critiques for people who submit their art to be critiqued, where I give pointers and feedback, comments, etc. every single month. So if you want something like that, make sure you check out my Patreon community, my monthly membership, where you can pay as little as $2 a month, which is less than a cup of coffee a month, or a latte, I mean, a month. A cup of coffee is about $2 a month for that kind of stuff. So check it out at generating.com forward slash join dash community. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos, for subscribing to this channel and liking these videos, commenting all the things. It helps so much and it means the world to me and John, who is my videographer slash husband. Um, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.